Innovation is more than just a good idea. Oftentimes, people have a good idea that solves a problem or offers a benefit in a way nobody has ever thought of. When such ideas pop up, all that is left is to find a way to take the idea from theory to reality. People come up with ideas every day, from their kitchen tables in the most random places. Taking an idea from theory to reality is what is important. People are naturally inventive. However, there are many roadblocks like lack of resources. Red thread thinking helps you innovate for the marketplace, which means that your innovative product, business, or service must have value if it is to generate profitable growth and improve competitive advantage. For an innovation to really work, it has to succeed from both the consumer side and the business side, not just be creative. Enough people must want to buy the product to make manufacturing it worthwhile. And the product has to appeal to distributors if you want to go beyond just your own web sales and consumers. An idea that is simply creative could stop short of being innovative if consumer buy-in isn't enthusiastic. Red thread thinking helps you distinguish between the creative ideas that won't work and the truly viable revenue-producing innovations. It is important that everyone is innovative. Red thread thinking can help our drive to find new and better ways of doing things, making life easier, safer, more fun, and more prosperous. Not just for ourselves, but other people as well. By making innovation part of our daily life, we might just think of a way to solve the world's biggest problem while trying to deal with a small and personal one. Chapter 2. True Innovation Comes from the Brain there is a newer model of the brain called intelligent memory that suggests that there are two systems, learning and recall, that work in the brain in a variety of combinations, and that this is what making connections is all about. The brain needs to evaluate a new idea to decide whether it's worth investing in. There is ongoing study work on how the brain works to innovate, and there are numerous research projects that test various ways to help us think more freely. Many of these studies give us a reason to be optimistic about developing our ability to innovate. Indeed, a number of recent research work confirms what people have experienced when using red thread thinking, that connections and insights can be had if they are taken on with a deliberate approach. It's all in our heads. We can actually fire up our brains to become better at observing and interpreting what we see around us. The abundance of brain research indicates that much of our ability to have insights, see connections, be creative, and innovate better is ignored by controllable factors. Your brain can reinvent itself through many thought and activity-based actions that spark the creation of new pathways that reroute, readjust, and otherwise change the brain's networking and connections. Deborah Kay with Karen Kelly One important thing is to take a break every now and then. Fresh ideas come when your brain is relaxed and engaged in something other than the particular problem you're engrossed with. Never underestimate the power of good rest. Did you know, it is a common belief that innovation is the domain of youths. But this is incorrect as research shows that older people's brains work just fine, maybe even better than younger ones do. Chapter 3. Start your search for the new by understanding and mastering the old. One of the best tools you use to predict the future is understanding the past. It is essential that you drill deeply into the existing knowledge base of your industry. This existing knowledge base includes past research, reports, history, and traditions that you can question for a fresh look. New eyes dig out things that were overlooked so by researching history. You're in essence reweaving the story into a new narrative. Research is fodder for new insight. It is like a giant piece of a puzzle. It is important to do a deep dive for information as a launching pad for innovation. While working for a company can give you more direct access to historical research through ready entree to records, old reports, and even people who have institutional memory and invaluable oral histories, you, as an independent innovator, also have an advantage. You're not bogged down by corporate mythology and legends. You can freely question assumptions and see things without the burden of what your bosses tell you is and isn't true. The challenge is in finding data. They're out there if you know where to look. You can take any topic and do deep dive research. Just make sure to do thorough research. Rather than generate new ideas, build on and connect existing ideas. Existing resources fuel innovation. The fastest, most profitable innovative resources can be right in front of you, yet they can go unnoticed. It is important to see what potential is there but is being under leveraged. If you go back and look at neglected businesses and ideas, you'll be surprised you'll find a bag of gold. Chapter 4. To get productive insights, it is important that you study people. 
Innovation springs from insight produced by the connections we make. Insight occurs when underlying strands connect to form new ideas during the journey to bring a product to the marketplace. Red thread thinking is a coherent way to make more connections, open up further possibilities, and work against failure. At its most basic, insight lies beneath every great idea we have. It is the integration and synthesis of what lies beneath the surface to form a new perspective. We have to realize that both sides of the insight equation are necessary for good innovation. The business side and the consumer side. Basically, innovative insight is the integration and synthesis of what lies beneath the surface, the realization of an essential truth that forms the basis for a truly game-changing product. The fusion of new information, existing data, and your memory forms a new perspective that propels you, the innovator, to act differently. However, be careful not to get fooled by an intense first impression. The reason that many innovations fail is that on the high of an intuition, people fall in love with and become overly attached to their idea. Not every insight will lead to a functional innovation. It is important to make a distinction between insight, new information, and innovative insight. Resist the temptation to hang on to a single idea. Instead, allow plasticity and seek bigger truths. Once you encounter a new insight, start questioning everything in a different way to see if it's an insight worth the while. It's better to seek answers and get past existing obstacles early in the game rather than be surprised by critical information later on. Develop the habit of challenging the way things are done. Get as much information as you can about every new insight. Struggling with all the twists and turns is what makes a true insight. One sure route to profitable innovation is showing empathy for customers. Reading external signals, including tone of voice, facial expression, the drift of conversations, and the details of behavior that we see in everyday life are great tools to this effect. Everyone is born with the ability to empathize with others, but you must hone this skill to become more adept at discerning your customers' feelings. Work on developing your innate empathy skills to find out how your customers engage with your products and why they go back to them. Chapter 5. Every innovator reaching for success should embrace simplicity. Simplicity is a key factor in the appeal and success of any innovation. This is especially true in the realm of consumer products whether they are technical in nature or not. For this reason, keep it simple should be the mantra of the innovation process. It may sound counterintuitive, but it's really all about the consumer and her culture, not about you or your interests. It's about what will sell commercially. Numerous studies of buying and user preferences show that the more clearly people understand the unique features of a product, the more likely they are to buy it. Consumers feel completely overwhelmed by aggressive information delivery. So avoid wasting anybody's time with a barrage of details. Maybe it took you five years to develop your idea, but no one wants to hear about that when you're trying to sell your idea to an investor or a customer. That can become part of your legend later on. You need a sharply focused plan with all its various strands woven together into a cohesive unit that is easily summed up by one succinct story. This is a way of showing respect for those in your audience. Why bother them with useless features and unnecessary frills? Isn't it smarter to invest in uncovering what they actually care about and give it to them? However, it isn't that simple to achieve simplicity. Achieving just the right amount of sophisticated simplicity for your intended audience takes skill and practice. Keep in mind that your intended audience is presented with so much product choice that the message and value of your product have to visually stand out from the rest and answer a consumer's need to make the right decision. A new product must send a message to the consumer. This product is going to make my life simpler, better, and more enjoyable. Making the simple complicated is commonplace. Making the complicated simple, awesomely simple, that's creativity. Charles Mingus In the area of freedom to choose, less is often more and simpler is often better. Steve Jobs understood this value of simplicity and used it as a tool towards Apple's renewed success when he returned as CEO in 1997. One of the things he did first was to drastically reduce the number of products the company offered. At the time, Apple had dozens of product lines to meet the demands of different retailers and market segments. But Jobs decided to narrow down Apple's output to four categories. The iBook, now known as the MacBook, the iPhone, the iPod, and Mac desktop computers. In no time, sales of this limited product line outpaced the rest of the company's products by a wide margin. Apple concentrated on a handful of highly coveted products, and in a very short time, the company was back in the news and was making record profits. 
It is correct to say that Apple's extraordinary success is due to Jobs' desire to fuse the most cutting-edge technology with the simplest and most intuitive operation. When thinking about how your innovation will fit in with its audience expectations about features and ease of use, always remember that culture must be considered. Just like we have it in beauty, simplicity is in the eye of the beholder. There are cultural issues that you have to be aware of when considering what kind of simplicity advantage your product should offer. Simplicity in an American market might not mean the same thing to a Swiss audience. Chapter 6. To make headway with your business, you need to be passionate about your innovative ideas. Passion is not blind allegiance to your idea. On the contrary, it's a willingness to explore, experiment, invest energy, hit a dead end, and still chase a new direction that allows your mind to refine, revise, alter, and grow good ideas. Doing interesting things requires both effort and execution. You can't move an idea very far without some deep-seated call to action. Achievement demands connecting to your personal motivations and desires, but then reaching beyond your feelings and often past your comfort zone so you can expand your knowledge, face obstacles with curiosity rather than fear, accept and judge criticism, and act. Always act. Without passion, a drive that's connected to your heart, it's far too easy to indulge the temptation to abandon the challenging and take the simpler and more predictable route. That's why mediocrity is so pervasive. Innovation is a way of harnessing passion into work and entrepreneurship. Great inventors today are the result of passion expressed through optimism, the ability to face fears, perseverance, and patience. Without these qualities, it's impossible for any inventor to make any headway in executing their ideas. The other four red threads are effective methods of innovating, but if you're not committed to weaving the threads because of your inner passion, it's not going to work. Get ready for failure. It might be frustrating, but you need to understand that there are many failures before the successes we all read about arrive. Through it all, exude a great air of confidence and optimism. Innovators are willing to take risks. They face uncertainty with confidence and equanimity. However, you should be quite flexible. Innovators can become so attached to a particular iteration of a concept that they miss information, telling them to pivot one way or another to improve on their innovation. Just because you love an idea and think it's great does not mean that your intended market will respond accordingly. Learn to shift and pivot when necessary. Good things come to those who don't jump the gun and who are open-minded enough to embrace and listen to what people say about their innovations, both what they like and what they don't like. Passion is believing that your original vision is not the only vision. Loving your innovation means being flexible enough to learn and listen, but still dedicated to making the business a success. If you stick to an idea and it's not a good one, then your business will die. So master the ability to shift and flex. Conclusion You can do your own share of making capitalism better by expanding the responsibility of business and society. Business can be a driving force, taking the lead toward a longer-term view, and innovation is a prime position to make sure of this. In whatever areas you focus on, make it real with regard to what your innovation is all about. Without real feelings and passion, even if what you do is positive, your customers will see it as a business ploy. Tell the story of why you did this and why you believe in it. Empathize with your customers as to why this may be important to them and emphasize authenticity and transparency. Let your business exude passion. This will go much farther than any marketing dollar you spend in the long run and will improve the future of the world. Work on your innovations and create a business that speaks to people's lives, needs, and sense of humanity. This is the ultimate thread that holds the world together. Try this. Whatever step you take, always take the ones that are real and are truly linked to your innovation. If you don't feel or mean it, don't do it.